Hello and a very, very uh, warm welcome to News Libre Sports. My name is Moses Echodo and today I'll be joined by Creed Mugabe and uh, Koma Goma. As you can always see, uh, Creed is always ready to laugh uh, whenever <laughs> you mention his name. I think, I think it's, not, it's not every day that people mention his name, uh, even in his locality. But uh, here on News Libre, we are bringing you all the sports stories. You will forgive us for having been away for quite some time. We've been trying to, we've been having different things going on, but we are back and we're getting giving you all the stories uh, right today. And of course, we're going to have so many talking points. Today we're going to talk about uh, the game between Manchester United and Liverpool, a mouth-watering encounter at Old Trafford. Is it a mouth-watering encounter? No. Definitely. Is it? With, with, uh, with the all that is happening at Old Trafford, I highly doubt. But, of course, there are... <laughs> The other game that we're going to be talking about is uh, Borussia Dortmund taking on Augsburg uh, in Germany. And of course, in Spain, we're going to take a deep dive into the game between Sevilla and Valencia. Another game that should offer us so much uh, to have. And of course, we'll also give a little bit of a hint as to why the El Clasico was cancelled. Gentlemen, yes. Manchester United, welcome Liverpool to Old Trafford. Liverpool have had so far a hundred percent success in the in the English Premier League. Won eight out of the eight games that they are they were supposed to play. Have twenty four points. They are fifteen points away from Manchester United. Manchester United are two points above relegation. <laughs> what do you make of this battle? Do you think that this is a game where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer revives his fortunes at Old Trafford? So finally, he gives out the microphone. Now <laughs> we can speak. Yes. <laughs> I mean, as I, <laughs> after a marathon of uh, the introduction and everything, yeah, yeah, throwing a couple of shots in there. So you know, you know when you watch BBC Sky Sports, you get to learn a couple of things here and there. So I was in this sabbatical that we took, I was learning one or two things about presentation. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, if you enter into this game proper, of course, for starters, you have to look at maybe where these two teams have come from. And if you're looking at the last 10 years, mm. you notice that Liverpool have only won at Old Trafford twice. That yeah. is in 2009, in March. Mm. It was a 4 1 win there. Of course, yeah. and Leeds United have been taken the lead. Then, most recently, 2014, under Brendan Rodgers, yeah. where Gerard could have easily walked away with a hat trick of penalties. But <laughs> yeah. that hit the post, and then eventually, yeah. you know, yeah. Suarez had won for Gerard Smith, and, you know, Liverpool walked away with a win. win. Yeah. But other than that, Liverpool haven't seemed to get any kind of, any kind of positive results from Old Trafford. Exactly, from, from Old Trafford. And this has seemed to be the case, especially when they come up with their 4 3 3 formation. I tend to notice that they come up stuck against United. United who tend to play a smash and grab game against Liverpool yeah. because they may have noticed that, yes, Liverpool probably have a better team than them in the moment, so they tend to keep so much of the ball. And I feel a smash and grab game would suit Liverpool better, but of course, Jurgen Klopp is not going to allow that, especially when he knows he has the authority in his ranks to dominate possession. So you find United are the ones going to be playing the smash and grab, whereby they're trying to channel balls into Rashford and exploit his space. I understand uh, Anthony Marshall is also back. Of course, they have the mm. speedster who is frighteningly quick in, in Daniel, Daniel James. James. Yeah, so it, it tends, and, and in that kind of event, you find that United will be hoping for that one moment to get that accurate pass, of course, and hit Liverpool on the break. On the other end, Liverpool, that 4 3 3, they tend to labor so much, so much position, but very little to show for it, and yeah. that has always been the trend. So I think a tweak to maybe something that is more fluid or expansive, like a 4 3 one mm. have Bamino um, you know, drop into the number 10 position, of course mm. you have money. Yeah. Um, whether Salah gets to play or not, I don't think that would be much of a concern because Liverpool really can come in doing a good job. And you know, the abundance of talent within this Liverpool squad, I, th I, I think they would really take a good game to United. Great. Five years ago, Manchester United had probably the best players in English football, some of the best players in English football. Of course, when we say the best players, yeah, before Ferguson, you, 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 of course, Ferguson had the best players at, at Old Trafford. But, you know, when you compare the two sides, five years ago, Liverpool could not match up in terms of uh, uh, the, the staff manpower that was at Old Trafford. But right now, the tables have since stand. Liverpool have arguably the best that team. They play an an interesting brand of football um, that that they that they define as metal football. Do you think that uh, United have a chance in today's game <laughs> tomorrow? Actually, I mean, in, in, on tomorrow's game. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, you talked about the five years, the previous years. I'll yeah. tell you this. I think that for Man United, 
they are not a good team. Yeah. I won't lie. They are not really a good team. And I think the problem started when Sir Alex Ferguson moved on. Because mm-hmm. when he moved on and uh, they brought in David Moyes, David Moyes. everything changed. Because yeah. by the time when uh, Ferguson moved on, they had won their 13th title in about 20 years. Yeah. So when David Moyes came in, this is where the wrong choices started. I mean, signing players was a problem for them and even mm-hmm. letting go of some of the most important players. Because I remember that time they signed Maron Pelai. Yeah, the actually on D-Day. Yeah. <laughs> on yeah. D-Day. Yeah. A team that had won the title, yes. you suspect that at least you need to add some quality experience as well. Your most important players need to be settled at the team yeah. so that you can compete. But if you don't do that, of course you don't have authority in the dressing room. You're not going to get the results simply because you don't have the right pieces. They were the defending champions. So from that time up to date, all the choices that they have been making to me are really wrong. In terms of coaches, players as well, because I'll give you an example. Two years back, you look at a team like Man City when they were building, throwing 50 to Spurs to get who, Kyle Walker, throwing mm-hmm. 50 to get uh, Mendy as well, yeah. you look at PSG, splashing money for Neymar, Mbappe as well, even Liverpool. At least you could tell that there is something they were building. Yeah. But for United, you don't see that cycle. Mm-hmm. You look at uh, when those other teams signed those players two years ago, yeah. up to date, which kind of players have joined United? Mm-hmm. You're going to mention the likes of Dalot, yeah. the likes of Lee Grant, James as well, Bisaka, Pogba as well. And when you look at this, this bunch of players, you can pick out maybe a few players that can win you the titles. Yeah. The likes of Pogba, Pogba can win you the title. So for me, I think wrong choices. Right now, they don't have the right players that can compete against teams like Man City and Liverpool. Yeah. You look at that game, you have to play against Liverpool. Yeah. If Pogba is out, I don't see any other player who can pass that ball. Yeah. And that's already creativity. That, that is quite true. That is quite true. Yeah. And, and of course, um, you know, we've delved into all the different teams, uh, what they're capable of doing and who could come out on top of this game. But um, Ed, in two seconds, which uh, United players should we be watching out for? Ah, it's really quite difficult to look out for the kind of players we'll be watching out for. Because when you try to look into how the game is going to transition, United are going to be sitting deep. deep yeah. They're going to be trying to cover out any yard of space that Liverpool will try to exploit. True, true. And of course, uh, they would look out for their speedsters. So if there's anyone that is really going to bound, uh, that's going to really stand out in this game, I think it's going to be the, the workaholics who are going to be in the middle of the path because they are going Mark to be a lot of and, and, and yes, as well as Pereira to get on the Yes, Pereira, Fred mm-hmm. could be the magic magic who I don't think may have quite the legs for this kind of tenacious yeah. sphere. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so for me it's going to be United's midfield because Rashford may have his one moment with a delicately, you know, placed pass to him, he will be clean on goal, it is up to whether he can pick his spot and score. The defenders, I don't think they will have much more to do other than man marking. So I think it's going to be down to United's midfielders. Craig, in two seconds. Yeah. And any Liverpool players to watch out for? Of course, all the players. Because <laughs> you look at all the departments, at least they have key players to, yeah. that can stand up in such a game. Yeah. Look at the back line, you have the likes of Van Dijk, he's a leader. Yeah. But don't forget that front three, they are playing against a United team. United is not good defensively. Yeah. I don't much how they, uh, they threw huge sums of money at the back, but it's not really paying off. Yeah. They can't score goals, they can't create. When Ed talked about the midfield, I think the only player uh, in that squad who can act as a threat is James. Mm. But the rest to me are I wouldn't really say useless, but they're pathetic. Yeah. They can't put up a good fight against a team like Liverpool, a team that wants to win the title. Mm. Yeah. And of course, for Manchester United fans, what we need to realize is that Paul Pogba is out injured. Uh, David De Gea is not going to be part of this game. We, are, we understand that Luke Shaw could also be missing in this game. There has been, I don't together with also Hesse Lingard, is not going to be the evergreen uh, youngster in Hesse Lingard. Of course, uh, there are doubts that have been also put across uh, for uh, Anthony Marshall. You look at uh, uh, the gentleman uh, Marcus Rashford who is not really firing in all cylinders as many would have hoped him to be for five years that he's been in the English Premier League he's not yet attained uh, the kind of uh, status that many fans uh, thought that he would be able to attain of course the other, on the other hand Liverpool almost all players are back in contention Alison Baker a very very key ingredient in this Liverpool uh, lineup is getting back into the starting line as well because you know what he's probably one of the best commanders of the defense he's probably one of those uh, goalkeepers who has incredible reflexes so liverpool will definitely welcome his services back from that injury so from me i think i'll go with uh, a 3-0 win for liverpool ed um, i think it will be a 2-0 win liverpool okay so it's talking about united <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, I'll go with a draw. A draw. A one-all draw. So, 
And of course, it's a battle of the most expensive defenders. One is conceding goals for fun. The other is actually showing incredible leadership. But again, it's, it's Manchester United hosting Liverpool at Old Trafford. Gentlemen, Dortmund taking on Osberg. Um, actually, I think it's Dortmund taking on Monchipo. Monchipo, 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 Monchipo